The following is a presentation of Team Bonding, providing more than 100 live, virtual, or hybrid corporate team building activities for companies around the world. Visit teambonding.com to schedule your event now. Hello, team. Once again, it's me, Rich Renanzlan, and I'm welcoming you to Team Building Around the World, the podcast where I speak to people from the team bonding, team building industry from all across the globe. Today, we are going all the way to Milan, Italy, to speak with the founder of Unreal, Mr. Fabio Tagnetti. Now, before we get yes. to Fabio, of course, I would like to take a second and share some love with my supporters. This show is supported by the Catalyst Team Building Network. Find out more about the world's largest network of team building providers at CatalystGlobal.com. I also want to thank our friends at B1G1, which can make your business a real force for good. Visit B1G1.com to get started. Now, my guest today, Fabio Tagnetti, is what has been described to me as a natural-born stimulator, which means <laughs> in his events, he loves to provoke and shake up the participants, questioning their beliefs and things that limit their choices. So, ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming the creator of Unreal, Mr. Fabio Tagnetti. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you so much. Don't worry about those that applause. That's just a small group of people I keep chained up under my desk, Fabio. <laughs> sure. How are you today, my friend? Oh, very fine and very hot. Uh, <laughs> really, summer just arrived, and so this is the best season for me. I'm happy and hot and uh, uh, willing to enjoy it. <laughs> Fantastic. Uh, but let's start off. Why don't you tell uh, my audience out there a little bit about yourself? Oh, yes, wonderful. It's nice how, how you describe me. <laughs> um, as a natural bone stimulator, this is very nice. This is how many people like to to, to describe me. Mm -hmm. But I, I like to tell also something about me outside the world, you know. Please. I, I'm, I love to travel a lot. So I, I'm a natural born traveler, if I can say something in the same direction. That's great, yeah. So I like traveling by myself and also with my wife, with my kid, and finding different places, really different. I know that Europe is a very nice place where to be, but mm -hmm. for me, traveling is uh, at least, you know, eight to 10 hours of flight just to go really far away. <laughs> and in the east part, so, you know, Southeast Asia or in the, in the west part, so in the, in the, in, in the I guess, uh, Caribbean and other parts like that. This is very nice. That's right. According and to your, if I may, according to your profile, you've got 14 plus years of management training courses under your belt. Ranging uh, from now 20, now, now 20, 20? Yes. fantastic. But that's you're 20, ranging yeah. from Europe, Africa, the Middle East, Asia, Australia, and here in North America. Tell us about that. Yes, yes it is. And this is amazing for me because, um, as I told you, I love to travel. And uh, mm -hmm. this job, my job, helps me to travel also for, for work. And this is very nice because, you know, I, I can get in touch with uh, people of different culture, different mentality. Mm. And, um, yes, my my core business is uh, management training. And so when I travel around the world, um, because different um, companies, clients are asking us to uh, deliver the same kind of training courses in uh, different countries, it's nice because um, it's really different uh, how you manage uh, people all around the world. So if you're in China or in Japan or in US, for example, or in right. Canada or in uh, Southeast Asia, for example, or in uh, Tunisia, it's uh, really different. Uh, you need to understand that you need to deliver something uh, uh, in, in a different way. I want to tell you uh, something very nice, very Please. funny. Something, it happened in uh, India okay. a few years ago. Um, I was delivering a course uh, and I saw people just in front of me were just shaking the head uh, just as to say no, you know, right or left, right or left. And I was wondering what was happening. Mm. And so I asked, okay, what, what happened? Is, it, is everything correct? Is it everything clear? And they said, yeah, that's for sure. But they continued doing like that. Then I understood that it was that way, it was their way to, to say, yes, I agree with this. Mm. So it's a really different cultures, and wow. I love it and enjoy to understand different cultures. Well, let's talk about those different cultures. I mean, you've been in team building going on 20 years, management training uh, being your specialty. What other kind of differences do you see in management styles across the globe? It's differences um, in uh, the way uh, you are in a class when you deliver courses, you know? Okay. Uh, just, uh, just making an example to you, in Italy, I love um, making courses in, in, in Italy because people are really enthusiastic or they are really energetic and they, they jump in uh, 
all over the, the course. So the ask questions, they are interactive. Mm -hmm. So my, my concern is not to make them too much interactive because then it becomes a mess. <laughs> sure. When, I, when I, I've been to Japan, for example, it's exactly the opposite because they can just say in silence to listen to what the teacher, because this is what they think about me, uh -huh. what the teacher is saying. And so it's really different because you need to collect information from them from a very different way. And, and this is something you learn only when you're there. They can tell you, but you learn only when you leave it. This is for sure. Gotcha. Yeah, I was going to ask, how do you prepare yourself for those differences? But it, it is just a matter of showing up and asking the right questions before you begin? Mm, I try to, to learn the culture before going to a place uh, right. in order to get aligned, in order to be prepared. But as I told you before, um, you cannot be prepared 100% because uh, there are some elements of the culture that is not written in the books so you cannot find in the internet. Right. So you can find only by living it. And this is the funny part, if you think about it, learning by doing. Speaking of which, what is it about the team building industry that you decided you needed to be a part of? How did you begin this? <laughs> this was uh, a funny way. First, uh, I want to tell you that um, we, have the, we have been uh, doing team building uh, with Catalyst, so team building for events uh, right. since a couple of years. But before we were making team building uh, in, a, in a different way. So team building made of a couple of days, uh, two or three days uh, with a few people. Mm. This kind of events uh, is something that was uh, new for us. And it came just by accident, you know? It was uh, something funny because uh, one of my colleagues, uh, once she, she sent me a, a link to YouTube uh, showing me a nice video of uh, chain reaction uh, that is a kind of team building. Right. Uh, just to show me, you know what, we, we could do something similar. And I answer her, yes, I know this kind of team building, but it's uh, really uh, difficult to organize it. You need to be prepared on that. Mm. And then I was curious and tried to dig to understand who was doing this kind of, how do you say, the video, because it was really well made. Okay. So I dig, I dig, I dig, and I found out that there was a company just behind. I said, wow, these are really, really well prepared, really tough on this. And so I was watching, they were all over the world, except for Italy. And so I say, why not? And we got in touch. We loved each other and then we got partnership. You know, that, that's how it happened. So let's talk about management training then, since that's what you focused on. Mm -hmm. Let me just ask you straight out. What is it about management that you need to teach? What is it that people seem to be missing about managing others? Oh, yeah, I understand. Your question can lead to different, to different uh, directions. We have the time, Fabio, whatever you want to talk about. <laughs> sure, for sure. <laughs> So um, it's interesting because uh, generally uh, companies uh, are asking uh, training companies uh, to help them uh, um, giving tools and behaviors uh, to the employees. Sure. Just for example, uh, I need these people to be more effective in problem solving or these people to be more effective in negotiation or in leadership because they, they lead a team, they manage a team, mm -hmm. but they are managers and not leaders. So they need to understand how to become leaders and lead people to their directions. Okay. So <clears throat> they want us to give them behaviors and skills. But we go a little bit further because we focus more on beliefs. So we first start on beliefs uh, to make them understand why it is important to behave a certain way. Mm. When they understand why it is important, uh, then they understand that it is good for them, not for the company. It can be good for the company, but it's uh, good for themselves. It gives advantage to themselves uh, to behave in a certain way instead of a certain other way. That's why we make a lot of exercises, a lot of simulations. Uh, we, we play together. We have challenges. And mm -hmm. so we stimulate. That's why uh, we like to stimulate mm. because it is really interactive. And at the end, they come out with tools, uh, but more than tools, uh, they will to use the tools uh, when they finish the courses. I don't know if it's clear what I, what, what I, want, to, what I want to give you. Well, it, actually, if you hold on for me one second, Fabio, I want to dig sure. deeper into this because that's a large topic to sort of delve into. But first, let me take a quick second and tell all my friends all about the Catalyst Team Building Network, an association of team building providers. With representatives in over 90 countries speaking more than 20 different languages, the Catalyst Network is widely regarded as the voice of the team building industry. Network members share resources, best practices, and business opportunities. Catalyst partners are learning from each other and pushing the boundaries of what is possible in team building. 
Catalyst Network members share a common goal of creating highly relevant, socially responsible, good value experiences for their clients. For more information, please visit CatalystGlobal.com, the Catalyst Team Building Network, the world's largest network of team building providers. And we're back with my new best friend, Fabio Tonietti. Fabio, let's talk again about management. You, you were talking about how you have to give them manage, manager tools to work with. Yes. What are some of those tools? Give us some examples. Mm, good. Wonderful. Uh, let's talk about leadership, for example. Yeah. Just imagine uh, we have in, the cl in a class uh, people who already manage uh, employees, uh, mm -hmm. but it, there is a real difference between managing and leading a person because uh, a manager makes people uh, do things mm -hmm. and they believe this is enough. So management, managing means uh, making people do things. A leader makes people want to do things. And this is completely different. There is okay. a huge difference because you focus on the will of the other people. Right. So you need to focus on motivation. That's why, for example, in a leadership course, uh, we, we understand that in order to achieve results and performance, uh, you need to focus on competencies uh, and motivation. So we work on tools for competencies and tools for motivation, and then we blend them in order to achieve a boom, uh, in order to make them have the right tools uh, to manage their employees in the right way. Okay. What are some of those tools? Uh, what are some of the things you... Because let's say a lot of times when I talk to people you know, not in this industry, and I ask them about the management styles they've seen in their various careers across the, you know, across the map. Mm -hmm. a, a lot of the thing, a leader is just that person who's giving you the assignment of the day, the thing you have to do. What is it about the person who tells you your job and the person who motivates you? What's the difference between the two? How do you get from one to the other? Uh, there is a difference that you make them understand the reason behind what you're asking them. Okay. So we are focusing on a vision. I'm not only asking you to do something, I'm making you understand why this something is important to you. Mm. And this is the very first part. That's why we focus on motivation because motivation is a really big word. I mean, it's spread all, all over, you know, people love to, to use the word motivation, but motivation, just, just think about motivation as a, a, a motive action. So the reason why you mm. act, the reason why you do something, if you give a person the reason why, then this person is more willing to do it. This is not only for leadership. Uh, this is for leadership. This is for presentation, public speaking. Mm -hmm. This is for selling. This is for negotiation. It's, it's for a lot of things. Mm. When, when I'm in, in the class, um, at the very beginning, uh, I just tell the, the, uh, the participants, my, my goal is not to give you tools. My goal is to sell you tools. Not because they need to pay. The company already paid, of course. Right, right. But the logic is, <clears throat> I want to sell you tools because I want you to feel that these tools are so useful that you want to use them. Mm. The same is uh, from them uh, to their employees, if we are talking about leadership, for example. So we need to understand about motivation and with motivation, we give a tool. For example, there is a, a tool made by a guy whose name is Shane. It's called Career Anchor, Career Anchors. Mm -hmm. uh, we focus in order to understand that each individual is different uh, and they have a different motivational leverages. If we understand which one is the right motivational leverage for this person, then we can use it in order to motivate this person in our direction. So this person is happy and motivated because he has or she has whatever needed and we are happy and the company is happy. Hmm. So we give a tool, for example, in order to understand, to scan and to understand the right motivational leverage for each of the employees. This is for the motivation part, for example. Right. Well, how do you and find those motivational leverages? It's nice because uh, there are many ways uh, to understand. Uh, yeah, you can understand motivational leverages uh, of your employees by uh, talking to them, by okay. asking. You know, most of the time, only by listening, uh, they can tell you many things. Mm. Or you can even talk to them. You know what? I, I, I learned something new and I wanted to share with you because I think this can be good for you and this can be good for me. So I want to be a better manager and I would like to understand what is important to you because I understood that my goal, my only goal in, in this company is to make you grow, is mm. to make you grow. Because if you think about it, we, we believe that managers have, have a goal of producing things. But this is not correct because uh, the manager need to make other people uh, pro producing. They make, need to make other people make performance. 
So the performance needs to arrive from the other people. So, and, and my goal is to create a, a, um, an environment mm -hmm. so that uh, people are willing to perform more and so that people have all the competencies uh, in order to perform more. And this is a win-win-win situation. Nice. Win for the employee, win for the manager, win for the company. Very nice. And for some people, even just knowing that your manager and the upper echelons of your company are listening to your ideas and, and actually talking to you about them is a motivator unto itself. Wouldn't you agree? It is. It is. Absolutely. Fantastic. Absolutely. Now, is, this the way mm -hmm. it was, is this the way it's always been done in Italy or is that, has there been a shift in your experience? Mm, it, there has been a shift uh, ah. also because uh, this is what we call uh, emotional training. Eh? And this is the kind of methodology that we use. And it's uh, really kind of different from uh, the slide uh, kind of uh, training course. So we really use no slides during our training courses eh? mm -hmm. because we create uh, uh, the path uh, together with the participants. Great. So the shift is really, I, I can say it really happened and I hope it happened and I hope that also our competitors went in this direction mm -hmm. because um, this is the best way to give tools uh, to the participants and to make them use this kind of tools. So it was um, a shift, but uh, since uh, some one or two decades ago, it was really a kind of a lecture. So I tell you things, uh, you learn things, uh, and uh, then I hope that you are using these things in your, in your everyday work life. Right. But uh, now everything changed because uh, there is no way to give tools uh, because uh, uh, in this way, you are not sure that these people are using this yeah. tool afterwards. Yeah. And uh, companies are spending money for this, so they want the results, of course. <laughs> That's fantastic. I, I hope you don't mind, though, uh, uh, Fabio. As fascinating as this is, I do want to shift gears a little bit on you. Let's talk about charitable work. Do you work with any sort of charities over there in Italy? No, uh, we don't. Uh, okay. uh, we don't, or not yet, uh, but because uh, we decided to focus um, our money, our energy, our time uh, in another thing, in another project we have. Uh, uh, what we like to think it's a special project, and uh, we call it Academy. Ah, um, yes. uh, this is uh, a project where we go to universities um, and we give lessons, uh, uh, we give uh, courses for free to the students. Mm. And uh, almost every year, we try to go into different universities in Italy, so uh, try to spread all over Italy. And we make a selection of the people who are really interested uh, and we try to give uh, to them the same kind of courses uh, that we give to the companies. But um, we give it for free because we don't want them to pay for it. It's useless. It's stupid because uh, this makes a, a, a filter that we don't want to have. So we want to have a filter based on motivation. And that's how we okay. filter people. And it's a very nice job that we are doing there. I mean, I like it. And uh, all the trainers that are doing this uh, love it. Also, mm. because having a class of um, uh, students, having a class of uh, university guys and girls, uh, right. Is really motivating because they are they are curious. They are they are taking everything you are giving. Also because they are used in a very of a di very different kind of uh, lectures. Because what they learn from university is really a lecture style. So they sure. listen and they take notes about it. In this way, they really experience this. And I remember once uh, we were talking about um, uh, theory of games. Uh, it's uh, one of the elements that we see when we go in team buildings. Uh, mm -hmm. And we made a game that was really tough, you know. They, 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 they should cooperate together, but then they came out to be in conflict, or one group to, towards the other. Mm. And the best part was the debriefing. And during the debriefing, one of the guys said, hey, I know this is the theory of games. And they say, yes, congratulations, <laughs> but uh, you know it. Uh, and how come you, you, you perform this way? And uh, the guy answered, yes, but we never understood it this way. Because ah. one thing is um, reading and studying. One thing right. is uh, touching with hand, by hand, right. you know, first hand. Right. And this is what we love to do. Uh, last uh, October, we were in, um, in Venice University. Mm. And we made a really special project uh, uh, based on debate. So we created a debate, uh, uh, a debate course for them. And then we made a competition among students. Uh, it was really very nice. So this is our way to, to give uh, what we know mm -hmm. uh, to, to other kind of people. That's great. That's, that's still an excellent way of giving back. Thank you. Now, Thank hold you. on one second for me, Fabio. I do need to take a step sure. away for a minute. 
because I'm going to tell all my team once again about B1G1, which can make your business a real force for good. When you're part of B1G1, you bring new purpose, meaning, and relevance to your business by making giving a core of what you do. Unlike eventual giving models, B1G1 helps small and medium-sized businesses achieve more social impact by embedding giving activities in their everyday business operations to create unique giving stories. Every business transaction can impact lives from as little as just one cent. So please, visit B1G1.com to get started. B1G1, business for good. So, uh, Fabio, how are things going over there in Italy? We heard on the news over here, especially about how, how hard COVID-19 struck Italy and how fast. How are things going now? Yeah, that's why it's a, it's a funny question, because Italy was one of the countries that were most impacted mm -hmm. by COVID-19, yeah. and really since the beginning. Um, so now things are coming to the light little by little again, but I can tell you that since the um, end of February, everything stopped, stopped completely stopped sure. for two reasons. So first reason was because of uh, uh, the COVID-19, so no, no opportunity to meet again. And right. the team building is all about meeting, of course. Right. And um, it was not only about this, it was be also because uh, companies were a little bit afraid, scared of uh, investing money in, in a so difficult period. So, so they freeze that, they've frozen everything. Mm. Now, after a few months, they understood that uh, they cannot keep on going like that. So right. little by little, they are opening. Opening first with online, online team building and online courses. Right. And they are trying to understand how to do it also live. It's not yet, but I believe from September, October, we could again start with live courses. Fantastic. I, I wish you all the best with that. But how are things going with the virtual? Um, are you finding that it's really taking off there in Italy or are people slow to respond? It is right now, it is right now. And um, the, the COVID-19 helped uh, uh, people, have companies uh, open their eyes uh, from mm -hmm. the very virtual point of view, because be before this, um, <clears throat> they were all closed. I mean, I don't like it because it's distance, uh, it's not going to give the same results. Um, but now they are, they, are, they are forced by doing this, uh, you know, meetings they are doing. And they understood that there is a lot of advantages. Mm -hmm. So um, this, this is why I told you, we are, they are, opening little by little because they are trying to understand and we are using this moment in order to to show them to make them taste you know we have a different kinds of uh, virtual team building right. and uh, we are making them taste both the companies or the dmcs uh, uh, in order to show them that that they can have uh, almost or, or totally the same results uh, mm. that they had used to have uh, with uh, normal team buildings let's talk again look just as over there it is it is over here everyone's starting to look to reopening companies are still a little hesitant here especially in massachusetts to reopen those doors to get large groups of people all working together again in these kind of events that we do but let's look ahead to when we are able to actually do this live and face to face can you give us an example of a great memory of an event you've had just as inspiration uh, mm -hmm. one of the best memories i have about uh, an event mm -hmm. it was a team building um, it's called um, flat out formula one ah. and then uh, we ran this event for uh, a client uh, was a bank mm -hmm. and it was a new bank here in italy so it was their first convention their first uh, conference they did nice and it was very nice because uh, there were all the people there, included the CEO. Mm. And the CEO is uh, one of the most influential persons here in Italy, one of the most famous CEO here in Italy because wow. he had been CEO of many big companies. So he's really, really big and really famous. Mm. And what I loved uh, is that he was together with the other teams, uh, just as one of them, <clears throat> just creating, <laughs> doing, cutting, uh, putting together. And it was amazing. And when there was the running competition, uh, he was not driving the car, but it was uh, one of the guys who was pushing the car. <laughs> he was a great example, amazing example. You know, during the briefing, I said uh, that I wanted to, to thank him for this. Uh, and he answered, okay, come on, this is normal. And I told him, no, 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 it's not normal. You feel it's normal. And this is the great part from you. But this is right. not normal because not many people would have done as you did. And this is, uh, you know, something that touched my heart and for sure touched the heart of all his people. This was really, really emotional. 
Now, do you have any kind of silly memories of events that you've done? Oh, let me think about it. <laughs> um, uh, silly memory. Uh, oh, I, I, I remember. It's not about the, the event itself. Huh? Mm-hmm. It was before the event huh? because it was the communication between us and the client. It was a kind of, a, you know, kind of candy camera. It seems like kind of candy camera because he told us what he wanted. He wanted something for a certain day. So we, we, we booked this huh? and by just just to let you know we, we also had other events in that period huh? so okay we booked it then after when we were about to buy flights uh, to go there because it was in the southern part of italy he said no 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 it was not this day it was the day after hmm. and so i say no no come on okay i understood it was the day after so we, we booked for the day after and then after a couple of days he told us uh, that it was not the day after it was the day before and the day after <laughs> it was a mess in communication a mess in communication at the end we understood he wanted two team buildings uh, one for day one and one for day two at the end we got it but it was really really funny because it was difficult for us to understand him we were changing and changing the booking of everything but finally we did it so i'm happy about it that's fantastic I, I love those stories of confusion, miscommunication, but you still manage to pull it off. That is great. At the end, we are always right to the point of luckily, fortunately. Right. It was funny, let me tell you. <laughs> now, let me ask you. You say you have a wife and a, and a small child. Is that correct? Yes. Uh, let's call him a boss. Eh? Yes. Uh, okay, he's great. Leonardo. You have- <laughs> he's eight and, eight and a half years old. Yes, he's, uh, he's, my, he's my manager. Let's, call, let's say that. Very nice. But let me ask, how was your personal life affected by your professional one? Because you've been doing this for so long, it's got to be a part of who you are. <laughs> how do you make, how do you, how do you interplay this with your normal everyday life? Oh, um, you are talking about my boss. You are talking about Leonardo. Uh, right. w- one, one of the ways it affects, it's also, um, especially uh, with him, I guess. Um, first, because um, uh, his uh, birthday party is uh, really a party because uh, I, I like to create things together with my wife. Uh, we mm-hmm. create uh, kind of you know events, uh, team buildings, uh, and we involve all his uh, his uh, his uh, friends uh, ah. you know, to make a competition among themselves. And so it, that's that's funny, you know, because we use what we learned uh, in, in in I use what I learned in my in my my career mm-hmm. for him, and also something. Uh, uh, also very funny is that you know before delivering um, a team building uh, right. uh, we we love to try it by ourselves in order to see what happens uh, what is going wrong uh, how to be on the point uh, when the client is asking us uh, mm. and generally we do it uh, in a little park nearby here and when we go there, people see us in a very funny way, you know, because uh, we create the cars, uh, we play with things, we play with, with ropes, uh, we play with balls and other things. Uh, and they, they see us playing and they're really curious on what we are doing. Once we were creating um, how do you call it? Um, a car, a mm-hmm. car made of pasta, as we are Italians, of course. <laughs> <laughs> a car made of pasta. And this is the <laughs> funny thing. I, I was um, uh, one, one or two months ago, it was really in, in, in the period of COVID-19. Uh, I was going to a supermarket by collecting the, uh, the, the, the food I ordered. And the lady on the cash, uh, where, where, where I wanted to pay, said, hey, but I know you. J- just please, uh, uh, Richard understand that it was with a mask okay mm-hmm. and he told me i i recognize you you are the one with the formula one car the three meters formula one car <laughs> that you were doing in the park i said oh my goodness <laughs> okay. now normally i take this opportunity to ask my guests uh, what their favorite event is that they do that they produce but let me ask you what's your son's favorite event that you've ever done with him so far <laughs> Um, he, it's, I, I guess if you ask him, it's always the last one because oh. he's the one he remembers more, <laughs> and the one because as he's more uh, adult, more more older, let's say like mm-hmm. that older, so he remembers better. And uh, last year, because uh, he's born in December, mm. last year we made a Harry Potter uh, metaphor. Huh. So we made all, all the kind of team building, all the kind of little, little exercise that we have. We, we transformed it um, into a Harry Potter style. 
So with the wand, with uh, going on a piece of paper without touching on the floor and all the stupid things like that. <laughs> this is what he would answer you, what he would answer you. My favorite, my favorite, my favorite are two of them, I guess. Um, yeah. One is uh, Chain Reaction. Huh? This is the one um, I I met, the, one, the reason why I met Catalyst Global and we fell in love with each other. Mm-hmm. And I love it because I love to see what people can do. It's amazing, amazing. And the other one is um, um, Be The Box. Uh, it's a team building, very special team building, where people, teams have, have a box uh, and they have to open it. it it's, a kind of a, it's a kind of escape room, but on, right. on the, uh, upside down. Nice. They, they need to open it and they need to understand. I, what I love on this uh, is the fact that at the end, they, they understand that there is no way to open the box uh, if they don't understand that they need to play together, they need to cooperate among teams. Mm-hmm. Um, this is the uh, trainer part of me, you know, because I like to choose uh, Catalyst Global. I have a huge amount, a lot of team buildings, uh, and right. we love to select the ones uh, that have uh, really nice uh, learning outcomes. So these, these two, I think, are the one I love most. Excellent. Now, just for my audience who may not know, can you explain what Chain Reaction actually is? Because you've mentioned how much it brought you into the Catalyst network, but they might not know what the actual event looks like. Yes, absolutely. Chain Reaction is a team building where teams have to create simple machines using tools they are provided in order to, to bring the energy from the beginning to the end of the simple machines. So uh, the energy can go uh, from up to down, bottom to, to down, mm-hmm. can go horizontal, can go in diagonal, can go a, in, a, in a radial way, mm-hmm. and they are held by, by tools in order to do it. But what I love of this uh, team building is that it's not only teams that they need to create simple machines because mm-hmm. at the end all the teams need to be linked together among each other and they are put on tables and they are one meter distance one and a half meter distance so they need to find a way to continue the energy from one table to the other mm-hmm. and the reason why i like it of course because what they create but i also love it because uh, it's important to see how they communicate among each other because I have, um, I have a, a customer, an internal customer, and uh, I have an internal supplier. So we have to communicate to each other in order to understand uh, how you bring me the energy and how I'm going to give it to the next one. And ah. this is amazing, amazing. Also, the best part is the very end. Because they, they make trial and error, trial and error, and they learn by doing and by mistake. Hmm. And at the end, they're all watching for the final chain reaction. And it's, it's a joy. When they see that it works from the very beginning to the end, it's right. a joy. And so they see the results of their effort. This is why I love it. Fantastic. Fabio, thank you so much for coming on the show. You have been absolutely a gem to talk to. I can't thank you enough. For anybody else out there who wants to learn more about Fabio and what he does, go to unrealpro.com, unrealpro.com. But now, Fabio, I hate to tell you this, but I'm kind of sucking up to you a little bit at the end here because we are about to put you on the hot seat and we're going to go into our speed round. Uh, Let's see what happens. Fantastic. Now, the way speed round works is for the next 60 seconds, I'm going to ask Fabio a series of questions, and he's going to try to think up an answer as quickly as he can, right from the top of his brain, not delving too deeply into it, just giving me as many answers as he can in 60 seconds. So, you know, Fabio, in case you're competitive, I have 13 is the number to beat. One of my other guests has gotten us as high as 13. So, let's, oh, gosh. <laughs> let's, let's see how you do. What's your name? Fabio. Do you have any pets? No, except my kid. <laughs> Tell me your favorite thing about yourself. I love to laugh. Cat or dog person? Uh, cat person. Nice. If you could ask a cat a question and have it answered, what would that question be? How the hell can you see during the night? <laughs> Name one thing you remember from kindergarten. Oh, I was uh, escaping with my best friend, uh, Marcellino, <laughs> and the, the, the professor, the, the teacher was really scared about it. Nice. Who's your favorite musician? Oh, uh, it's called Giovanotti. It's an Italian singer. I love him. Very good. Your favorite toy growing up? My favorite toy, my favorite Lego, absolutely. Nice. And which of your favorite celebrity? 
my favorite celebrity. Oh, I don't think I have a favorite celebrity. That's okay, because you didn't get it through anyway. <laughs> We're out of time. <laughs> you did get a total of nine questions through, though. So congratulations Ooh. on that, Fabio. No, that's okay. You did fine. <laughs> Next time you'll do better because hopefully we'll be able to have you back on in a few months and we'll find out how things are improving for you. For but as, sure, we'll be very happy. And thank you again for coming on board, Fabio. You were absolutely fantastic. One more time, ladies and gentlemen, let's give a big round of applause for Fabio Tanieri. And thank you, one and all, for listening to Team Building Around the World. If you like this show, please share it with a friend or a colleague. We'd be grateful if you would subscribe to us on Apple Podcasts and leave us a favorable review on there or wherever you find your favorite podcasts. Now, if you have no favorable review to give, that's absolutely fine. Just shut up about it and everything will be cool. All past episodes can be found at teambonding.com slash podcasts. And that's it for me, friends. This has been Rich Rennensland. You've been listening to Team Building Around the World. And please always remember, if you are within the sound of my voice, you're on my team now, and I am always on yours. Thanks again, everyone, and we will see you next time. It's been said that you learn more about a person in an hour of play than in a year of conversation. So why not put your co-workers to play with the help of the team at Team Bonding? Team Bonding was founded over 20 years ago with one simple question. How can employees have a great time while fostering strong, authentic bonds between people who work together? Their catalog of innovative events includes scavenger hunts, Jeopardy, and much more. Each activity, whether live, virtual, or hybrid, maximizes the impact of team building with an accent on fun. Visit teambonding.com to schedule your event now. Team Bonding, when you want seriously fun results.